I was given an Oscar for that last film, but I always felt that the award was really meant for both of us. Through the years, I've, I've tried to capture the essence of Spence. He had a wonderful head, but he was a difficult man to know. He didn't like to rehearse. He certainly didn't like to talk about his problems. One night, not so long ago, I went up those stairs, sat down on the edge of my bed, and I found myself writing him a letter. And I've got that letter here, and I'd like to read it to you. Dear Spence, whoever thought that I'd be writing you a letter? You died on the 10th of June in 1967. My golly, Spence, that's 15. No, it's 18 years ago. That's a long time. Are you happy, finally? Is it a nice, long rest you're having, making up for all your tossing and turning in life? You know, I never believed you when you said you just couldn't get to sleep. I thought, oh, come on, you sleep. If you didn't sleep, you'd be dead. You'd be so worn out. Then, remember that night when, oh, I don't know, you felt so disturbed, and I said, well, go on in, go to bed, and I'll lie on the floor, and I'll talk you to sleep. I'll just talk and talk, and you'll be so bored, you're bound to drift off. Well, I went in, and I got an old pillow, Lobo the dog, and I lay there watching you and stroking old dog. I was talking about you and the movie we just finished. Guess who's coming to dinner? And my studio and your new tweed coat and the garden and all the nice sleep-making topics and cooking and dull gossip. But you'd never stop tossing. To the right, to the left, shove the pillows, pull the covers, on and on and on. Finally, and really finally, not just then, you quieted down. I waited a while, and then I crept out. You told me the truth, didn't you, Spence? You really could not sleep. And I used to wonder then, why? Why, Spence? I still wonder. You took the pills, they were quite strong. I suppose you have to say that otherwise you never would have slept at all. Living wasn't easy for you, was it? What did you like to do? You loved sailing, especially in stormy weather. You loved polo. But then Will Rogers was killed in that aeroplane accident, and the fun went out of it for you, didn't it? Tennis, golf, swimming? No, not really. You'd bat a few balls. Fair, you were. I don't think that you ever swang a golf club. Is, is swang a word? Huh? Swimming. Well, you didn't like cold water and walking. No, that didn't suit you. That was one of those things where you could think at the same time of this, of that. Of what, Spence? What was it? Was it some specific life thing? Like being a Catholic, and you felt a bad Catholic, no comfort, no comfort. I remember Father Cyclic telling you that you concentrated on all the bad, none of the good, which your religion offered. Must have been something very fundamental, very ever-present. And the incredible fact, there you were, really the greatest movie actor, I say this because I believe it, and I've heard so many people of standing in our business say it, from Olivier to Lee Strasberg, David Lean, you name it. You could do it, and you could do it with that glorious simplicity, that directness. You could just do it. You couldn't enter your own life, but you could be someone else. You were a killer, a priest, a fisherman, a sports writer, a judge, a newspaper man. You were it in a moment. You, you hardly had to study. You learned the lines in an instant. What a relief. You could be someone else for a while. You weren't you. You were safe. You loved to laugh, didn't you? You never missed those individual comics. Jimmy Durante, Phil Silver, Fanny Bryce. 
Frank McHugh, Mickey Rooney, Jack Benny, Burns and Allen, Smith and Dale, and your favorite, Bert Williams. Funny stories, you could tell them. And brilliantly, you could laugh at yourself. You enjoyed very, very much the friendship and admiration of people like the Canaans, Frank Sinatra, Bogey and Betty, George Q. Corvick, Fleming, Stanley Kramer, the Kennedys, Harry Truman, Lou Douglas. You were fun with them. You had fun with them. You felt safe with them. But then, back to life's trials. Oh, hell, take a drink. No, yes, maybe. Then stop taking the drink. You were great at that, Spitz. You were great. You could just stop. How I respected you for that. Very unusual. Well, you said on this subject, never safe until you're seven feet underground. But why the escape hatch? Why was it always opened to get away from the remarkable you? What was it, Spence? What was it? I meant to ask you, did you know what it was? What, what did you say? I can't hear you.